Hopefully, this forced analogy has been at least vaguely informational. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Today we're going to be looking at another hilarious Sam Onella video, this one also heavily requested, called The Forms of Carbon as Alcoholic Drink. Hey, maybe I will show them as nuclear reactors. Let's take a look. Hey kids, today I'll be discussing the alcoholic equivalents of the various allotropes of carbon. I know Hey Kids is an intro, but hey kids, let's talk about alcohol. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, an allotrope is just the various forms that carbon atoms can arrange themselves into. But anyway, cool. let's get started. So amorphous carbon is like beer. It's the first form to ever be produced by humans, likely by accident. It's also the weakest form. It has a bunch of varieties, most of which taste terrible. And you need a whole lot of it if you want to have a good cookout. So I would say amorphous, probably most like your uh, pressurized water reactor. Not exactly the first kind, but there's a lot of varieties of them, and they are probably one of the most prevalent. Uh, the vast majority of the reactors in the United States are pressurized water reactors, as well as other parts of the world. It's very simple. Reactor coolant is simply liquid water. It stays pressurized, so it stays in a liquid state the entire time, despite being at extreme temperatures and extreme pressures. Give you a sense of pressure over 2200 PSI. The water coolant just goes straight to the steam generator. The steam generator makes steam, turns a turbine, produces electricity. Really, the only difference between this and, say, a natural gas plant or a coal plant is the heat source. But as a result of having your heat source like this, completely carbon-free, very clean. One key feature of a pressurized water reactor is what you see in this diagram is the entire nuclear part of the plant. Uh, no radioisotopes get into the turbine or the secondary part of the plant. Keeps it very safely contained. Graphite is like wine. It's almost as old as amorphous carbon, having been used by humans since ancient times. However, it's significantly stronger. Up until recently, only the rich could really get much enjoyment out of it. But today, most individuals can use it if they choose, but not all varieties are equal. So for the second type, we'll go ahead and go with boiling water reactors. I could kind of see the same analogy using wine for that. Not as widely used as the beer reactors, the pressurized water reactors, but still fairly common. As far as the price goes, I would say they're similar, but definitely boiling water reactors have its own little niche. This is where the void coefficient comes in to a discussion. You've probably heard the term void coefficient from the Chernobyl series, but in the case of these boiling water reactors, the void coefficient is negative. That is to say, you increase the amount of steam in the primary, the reactor will shut itself down. The main difference between this one and pressurized water reactors is steam is produced within the reactor vessel. So the reactor is hydraulically connected to the secondary part However, uh, radioactive material is still largely restricted inside the uh, containment building. But the steam lines um, are still heavily monitored to ensure uh, no, no leakage occurs to the environment, to the secondary part of the plant. They are monitored in pressurized water reactors as well, by the way, just in case of a uh, st steam generator tube rupture. But this particular type of reactor, also very safe, very widely used. Diamond is like vodka. First of all, it's very strong, the strongest form that's likely to be found in the average household. It's typically valued based on its purity and clarity, though flavored varieties do exist. Though it can be manufactured right here at home, most people seem to prefer it when it's from far off lands. Seems kind of fake, prefer it from... that's... that's interesting. And remember never to use too much of it, or else you might regret it later. <laughs> so due to the rarity of diamonds, let's go with something a little bit more exotic, like the molten salt reactor. This one requires a lot of extra equipment um, in the case of being able to make the molten salt reactor coolant loops. It is more expensive because you have to fabricate all this equipment, 
get a whole bunch of specialists involved and does have that largely largely perceived but people do have their concerns over uh, proliferation and using the plutonium which is bred in these sort of reactors as a nuclear weapon just like with blood diamonds this one's a good bit more exotic and note when i said this plutonium is converted in there this reactor can actually produce more fuel than it is used now, that isn't to say it can be continuously operated without having to stop and refuel. This, this plutonium that is used can be saved for a later fuel cycle. So, in a way, it could. Uh, it does have that potential to eventually pay for itself. But these were never widely used, largely due to the fears of proliferation. And also, at least in the 50s and 60s, Uranium was thought of as being far more scarce than it actually was, so there wasn't as much of an economic need to be making your own fuel from your reactors. By the way, this isn't a completely unique feature to the molten salt reactor, the, uh, the breeder reactor. Um, other types of reactors can have this capability. Even pressurized water reactors can make plutonium. They just don't make more than how much uranium they burn out. What's interesting in the pressurized water reactor that I worked at, towards the end of a cycle, over 20% of the fuel you're burning is actually plutonium, which is interesting because the reactor, the reactor responds faster towards the end of life because plutonium is so much more reactive than uranium. Graphene is brandy. It's similar to graphite in structure, but it's put through a process to make it more pure, and as a result, it's much stronger. Graphene slash brandy. We're going to go ahead and go with the infamous RBMK reactor, the uh, Chernobyl design. Because it is similar, it's actually a type of boiling water reactor. You'll notice on the steam separators in this diagram that, there, that boiling does indeed occur within this sort of reactor design. But its biggest feature is, is actually moderated by graphite. So there's your more direct connection. But I figured use, comparing it to graphite, what just based on that aspect alone, would have been a little dull. So let's go for a more spicier option. The RBMK is interesting, to say the least. And it could actually have some potential. It's just a lot of safety features were cut with it. The graphite tipped control rods is infamous. You, you don't want to put the same material as your control rods, the things that shut down the reactor as the moderator, the thing that makes the reactor produce power. Well, one of the things that makes the reactor produce power. That's just bad engineering written all over it. So they could have just used boron or silver indium cadmium or literally any other type of control rod material there is. Some things that slows down the fission reaction on the length of the rod entirely. And another design flaw is make the rods drop faster. <laughs> and it isn't a size thing. The uh, reactor core that I, um, that I worked at was 14 feet long and they could fall to the bottom in two seconds instead of 20 seconds. This was an improvement that was made after the Chernobyl accident, but yeah. And the positive void coefficient is also questionable. I guess that you can say that is giving the brandy a little bit of a kick. But that by itself isn't necessarily dangerous. It's the those uh, awful control rod designs um, and everything wrong with the Soviet Union in their operating crew is what ultimately made Chernobyl. I'm not recommending any more RBMKs be built. I just, um, the reactor by itself could be, you can design an RBMK to be safer, they just didn't. Fullerenes are absinthe. It's not as mainstream as the other varieties, <laughs> mostly only being used by the intellectual types. It's also claimed to have a bunch of properties not shared by any other form out there. But despite all its hype, <laughs> it has little real world application currently. For absinthe, we'll go ahead and go with the uh, can-do reactor. So I mentioned that it's a bit, it's not as mainstream. So you just see this in Canadian nuclear power plants. It has a few interesting uh, features. 
One meaning the uh, heavy water, which is another word for maple syrup as a moderator. I'm just kidding. It's actually uh, deuterium. Um, so most hydrogen in water has just a hydrogen nucleus. It's just a proton. Deuterium, heavy water, is one proton, one neutron, that particular isotope of hydrogen. And so you do have to enrich heavy water, but you can also just use natural uranium. You don't have to enrich the uranium. So it's like, so the, so the cost trade-off is the cost of enriching water versus enriching uranium. So there's a bit of a trade-off. Another cool aspect of it is the reactor, you can refuel while the reactor is still operating. A um, few guys I know who um, operated these sort of reactors could refer to it as the oven or the, or the rotisserie. So you're making, uh, you're making power rotisserie style with the, uh, the can-do reactor. I think that's a pretty cool concept. While, so you could theoretically keep the reactor running without refueling, though there are other reasons to shut down a reactor other than refueling and other than emergencies. You will still have to do maintenance on your turbine building or on your steam generators or something. But compared to most uh, nuclear power plants that operate on an 18th to 24 month fuel cycle, having to refuel every 18 to 24 months, they can potentially go longer without refueling, but you would still have to do some periodic maintenance. Either way, I think it's a cool design. I'm kind of surprised that it's just a Canadian thing. Finally, carbine is like pure alcohol. Despite wow. its simplicity, it's extremely difficult to produce with current methods, except in very small amounts. If you were to have a bunch of it, however, it would be more than twice as strong as diamonds. For the carbine analogy, have to go with a fusion reactor. I know this is a little different, but right when he mentioned the hay, it has the potential to do to be over twice as strong, but we can't produce that much of it. That's clearly the challenges associated with fusion. So this design right here is a tokamak. Completely different principle towards every other reactor I talked about already. In this design, all that complicated stuff you see in that circular looking thingy is basically around just making conditions hot enough, contained enough, and enough pressure to induce fusion. So bringing together much smaller elements such as hydrogen, helium-3, lithium-3, and bringing them together to produce heat. But that's the main difference. Uh, the rest, it says in little power conversion system, you're still just boiling water. So it's the same overall concept, but the idea behind fusion is if we can reach enough important milestones in terms of energy conversion ratio and basically get a lot more energy than what we put into it, this could potentially produce a lot more energy than any of those fission reactors I talked about earlier. We just got to get there. I'm hopeful for fusion, but of those... But I can see any of those other designs um, taking off a lot more, at least in the near term, with the exception of RBMK. I don't, don't really need to see any more of those. <laughs> Hopefully, this forced analogy has been at least vaguely informational. But anyway, that's all for today. I'm Sam Manella, and thank you for watching. And that ends my forced analogy, keeping pace, or trying to keep pace with Sam's forced analogy. I think he did a little bit of a uh, better job, but let me let me know what you think. And hey, if you had a different idea for um, which reactor to correlate to each type of carbon or each type of alcohol, let me know what you'd pick. And if you support the continued advancement and use of a whole bunch of fun nuclear power plant, nuclear reactor designs, Please join me on my journey to a safe, clean, reliable, sustainable energy future using nuclear power by liking, subscribing, and commenting. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.